All right, guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about similar polygons. Uh, we're going to do this before we jump into similar triangles, um, because we just want to look at the, the general case of what makes two polygons similar, uh, regardless of the number of sides that it has. So in this lesson, we want to uh, be able to identify similar polygons and confirm that they're similar using proportions. And then we're going to solve some problems uh, using similar polygons. All right, so we've got some new vocabulary here. Similar polygons are polygons that have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. Um, you might say that they're proportional. Um, they, they look like, one might look like a miniature version of the other one. And our other vocabulary word is scale factor. Scale factor is the ratio of the lengths of the corresponding sides of two similar polygons, which basically means how much bigger is one than the other. If they have the same, same shape but different size, um, how much bigger is one than the other? If one is twice as big than the other, then it would have a scale factor of two, for instance. Here's a, here's a perhaps a better visual, uh, visual definition of similar polygons. Two polygons are similar if and only if their corresponding angles are congruent and all their corresponding sides are proportional. In this example, we've got polygon ABCD happens to be similar to polygon WXYZ. And the reason we know is because we have these corresponding angles that are congruent. A is congruent to W, B is congruent to X, C is congruent to Y, and D is congruent to Z. And all of their sides happen to be proportional. If we take their corresponding sides, AB to WX happens to be a ratio of 15 to 5. That's 3 to 1. Turns out all of their corresponding sides have this same ratio. BC over XY is a ratio of 12 to 4. Also, 3 to, reduces to 3 to 1. And AD and WZ, AD over WZ is 18 over 6 which is 3 to 1, and DC to ZY is 21 to 7, which is also 3 to 1. So all of their angles are congruent, and all of their sides are proportional. So these polygons are sim similar, and this is how we would write it. Polygon ABCD is similar. That symbol right there, I'm going to erase that little mark that I made just so that we don't confuse it with a congruent symbol. symbol. Uh, that is read is similar to polygon W, X, Y, Z. You'll remember our congruence, our congruence symbol was like that, with the equal sign underneath, implying that they are, they're congruent. Uh, but if they're just similar, we're gonna use that symbol. So we also have um, scale factor here. Again, we found the scale factor here of A, B, C, D to W, X, Y, Z was 3 to 1. Now, you could also state the scale factor of WXYZ to ABCD. In that case, you would say it's 1 to 3, because if you were to compare a side here with its corresponding side in the other polygon, you get 5 over 15, which is 1 to 3. All right, let's look at an example where we are given um, triangle ABC is similar to triangle RST. And they want us to list all pairs of congruent angles and write a proportion that relates the corresponding sides. Well, hopefully you remember from triangle congruence that these statements are very important. This is a similarity statement. We studied congruent statements in chapter four. And what these statements tell you are which angles are congruent to one another. And that statement tells us that angle A is congruent to angle R because they're the first letter in each of these triangles. That means B is congruent to S and C is congruent to angle T. So we can write that. Angle A is congruent to angle R and angle B is congruent to angle S and angle C is congruent to angle T, okay? And sometimes it helps to mark those, you know, A congruent to R, 
B congruent to S and C congruent to T. Now, you might be saying, hold on, I could tell that just from looking at it. You want to be careful. You want to be careful with that because sometimes these polygons are going to be twisted around. They might be mirrored. And sometimes it's not always obvious which angle is congruent to which other angle. So when in doubt, always go back to that similarity statement to make sure you know which angles are congruent. And then you can see also which sides are proportional. So you can see AB is the side that corresponds to side RS. So we could say um, they want us to write a proportion that relates these corresponding sides. So we'd say the ratio of AB to RS is going to be the same as the ratio of BC to ST, which is going to be the same as the ratio of AC to RT. And you'll notice that's also hidden in the similarity statement. If you look at this side AB, well, it corresponds to this side RS, first two letters. And the second two letters, BC, that side BC, corresponds to this side ST. And this side AC, if we take first and third letters here, that side corresponds to first and third letters over here, RT. All right, let's take a look at this question. If triangle GHK is similar to triangle PQR, could we determine which of the following statements is not true? So we want the one that's not true. Um, okay. The first uh, choice A, angle HGK is congruent to angle QPR. I don't know if you guys know this trick, but when you're given an angle, there's lots of different ways to, to name angles. Like I could just call that angle G. I don't have to call it HGK. In some cases, there's a lot going on and you want to be more specific. So you definitely go with the three letters. But um, in this case, you can zero rate in on what angle they're talking about by looking at that middle letter. That middle letter is always going to be the vertex of that angle. So when I read this, I see angle G is congruent to angle P. That is true from the similarity statement, right? I'm going to go ahead and mark it. G congruent to P. Okay, so this guy is good. He is definitely not the statement that's not true. I'm going to cross him off. Now, choice B is GH over PQ equals GK over PR. Let's take a look at our similarity statement. GH over PQ should equal... GK first and third over PR first and third. First and second over first and second should equal first and third over first and third. That makes sense. That's consistent with the similarity statement. So I don't have a problem with that. Um, and sometimes it helps to just go ahead and mark everything you know right from step one uh, based on the similarity statement. Let's go ahead and mark that angle H is congruent. To angle Q. And angle K is congruent to angle R. And then it, sometimes it's a little easier to see which of these sides are proportional. GH over PQ equals GK over PR. Yep, that makes sense. Now, is angle K congruent to angle R? Well, we just marked that from the similarity statement. So I don't have any problem with that. That's a true statement. I'm wondering if this is the not true statement. I'm going right for that middle letter again because I know that's the vertex. Is angle H congruent to angle P? No. No. That's the statement that is not true. All right, here's a good problem. Dan is designing a new menu for the restaurant where he works. Determine whether the size for the new menu is similar to the original menu. If so, write the similarity statement and the scale factor and explain your reasoning. Okay, here's his original menu and here's his new menu. So we could check and see if these sides are in fact proportional. Um, why don't we come up with a pair of ratios, set them equal to one another and see if we have a true proportion. So this side to this side, that ratio, let's call that 10 over 12. That should equal the ratio of this side to this side, 12 over 14, if they are in fact similar. Let's take a look at our cross products here. 10 <clears throat> times 14 
is 140. That's my first cross product. Should equal my other cross product, 12 times 12. That's 144. That's gross. Now, you can see that these are not, in fact, equal quantities. Therefore, this is not a valid proportion. And that implies that these two menus are not proportional, which means they are not similar. Okay? All right, Dan is back at it. He's gonna try again. He's designing a new menu for the restaurant where he works. Determine whether the size for the new menu is similar to the original menu. And if it is, we'll write the similarity statement in the scale factor. Let's take a look here and see if we can set up a proportion 10 over 8. 10 over 8 should equal 12 over 9.6 if these are in fact similar. Let's look at our cross products. 10 times 9.6 gives us 96 and 8 times 12 is 96. So these are in fact similar. They are proportional. And what is the scale factor? Well, if we were to write the scale factor from the original to the new, we would say that is 10 to 8. Or if that was written as a fraction, you might say, hold on, I think I can reduce that to lowest terms. 10 over 8 equals 5 over 4. Okay, so we could say that A, B, C, D is similar to R, S, T, U, and our scale factor would be 5 to 4. All right, these are my favorite types of problems where we get to mix the geometry and the algebra. The two polygons here are similar. Could we find X and Y? So based on seeing which angles are congruent, we can see which sides are corresponding. So if I knew the scale factor of this polygon to that polygon, I could probably find the stuff that we're missing. I could even set up a proportion that would help us solve for what's missing. Um, here, I don't know why they're asking us to find X. Oh yeah, there's X, there we go, found it. So we gotta find X and Y. I don't know which one we wanna go after first. Uh, if we go after X, X over three, could we come up with a proportion there? X over three should equal I could say eight over y plus one, but then I'd have too many unknowns. Could I say x over three equals six over four? And that looks good. I've got one unknown. What are my cross products here? Four times x equals three times six equals 18. So if I divide both sides by four, I'm gonna get x equals 4.5. Good. Could we do the same thing to find y? Could I say that 8 over this quantity y plus 1 must equal, well, that same ratio, 6 to 4, right? It should equal 6 over 4. And here my cross products are going to be 8 times 4 is 32, equals 6 times, don't forget, the quantity y plus 1 we're going to have to distribute here. And when we distribute that 6, we get 32 equals 6y plus 6. I can subtract 6 from both sides of that equation. And I get 26 equals 6y. If 26 equals 6y, I'll carry this over here, 26 equals 6y. I can divide both sides by 6. And I think we're going to find that 4 in 1 third, right, 4 in 2 6 equals y. Let's try one more like that. Here we've got two similar polygons and they want us to solve for a and b. Um, and based on which uh, sides are congruent, I can see that this side corresponds to this side. So right away there I can I can pick up my scale factor 5 to 3. And I could say 5 over 3 should equal, what do you want to go after first? Let's, let's do them in alphabetical order. We'll go after a. 5 over 3 should equal 4 over A. And what are my cross products? 5 times A gives me 5A. 3 times 4 gives me 12. 
and I can divide both sides by 5 and get A equals 12 fifths. You know I love that number. I'd love to leave it just like that. I know that bothers some of you, but that's a perfectly good number. There's absolutely nothing improper about improper fractions. But if you must, you could say that this equals uh, 2 and 2 fifths, which is 2.4. All right, can we find B? Same scale factor, 5 over 3 equals 5 over 3 equals 2 over B minus 6. 2 over B minus 6. Okay, and when we cross multiply here, we get 3 times 2 is 6 equals 5 times this quantity B minus 6. Don't forget to distribute here. When we distribute the 5, we get 6 equals 5B minus 30. We can add 30 to both sides. And we get 36 equals 5B. So if we divide both sides, I'll carry that over here, 36 equals 5B. If I divide both sides by 5, we get 7 and 1 fifth equals B. You might say that's 7.2. Or if you really want to impress me and get extra points on your quiz or test, you can say 36 fifths equals B. That's a super good number too. All right, let's take a look at a new theorem. It turns out that if two polygons are similar, then their perimeters are proportional to the scale factor between them. So if the ratio of this side to this side is, for instance, two to one, then I know the perimeter of this polygon is gonna be twice as large as the perimeter in this polygon. Their perimeters are going to be proportional by the same scale factor. Now, hopefully that makes sense because if I'm talking about the length of one side, I'm talking about linear distance, maybe feet or inches or meters or centimeters. And what do we measure perimeters in? Perimeter is linear measurement. It's just a summation of all these linear measurements around the outside of the polygon. So both the length of a side and the length of a perimeter are linear distance. So it should make sense that the perimeters of similar polygons should also be proportional to the scale factor between the polygons. Let's take a look at an example. Here, if ABCD is similar to RSTUV, find the scale factor of ABCDE to RSTUV. Now, um, we know angle E is congruent to V. We can maybe just mark one of those. I think this uh, shape is um, oriented in such a way that we can visualize which of these sides are corresponding. Um, but I want to immediately start filling in some of the missing information here. Right here in this polygon, if these two sides are congruent, well, then that side is 4. And then over here in this polygon, if these two sides are congruent, then this side is 10.5. And this side is 7. I don't like that they use this one hash mark here and here, implying that these are congruent when they're clearly, in fact, not. But that's okay. We'll, we'll get over it. So... Based on that, could we find the perimeter of each polygon? And can we tell the scale factor of this polygon to that polygon? I'm going to write K. We often use K to represent scale factor. K of A, B, C, D, E to R, S, T, U, V is 4 over 7. 4 to 7. Okay? And so how could we use that to figure out what the perimeter of each of these polygons is? Well, if you look at um, if you look at this polygon here, 
and this polygon, we could figure out what these sides are. And if we knew, if we knew one of them, we could find the perimeter of this one. And we can multiply that perimeter by 7 fourths to get the perimeter over here. So let's just say uh, x here is what we're after. And then we should say that 4 over 7 equals x over 10.5. And our cross products are going to go as 4 times 10.5 gives us 42 equals 7x. So I can divide both sides by 7. I'm going to get 6 equals x. So if this is 6, well then so is this. And now I can find my perimeter here. It looks like my perimeter is 3 times 6 is 18. Plus 2 times 4 is 8, 18 plus 8. So this has a perimeter of 26. Now, how do I know what to do with this scale factor? Do I multiply by it or divide by it to get from here to here? Well, hopefully you recognize that that fraction is a fraction that's less than 1. If I multiply by that, I'm going to get something smaller. So to get to from the smaller to the larger, I want to flip that over and take the reciprocal. And I want to take my perimeter, which is 26, and uh, I want to multiply that by, to find the perimeter of RSTUV, I am going to multiply that 26 times 7 fourths. And I'm going to get 26 times 7. What do we get there? Is that 159, 165, 185? over four is that right never trust your math teacher 185 divided by four and i get 46 and a quarter and now you might see that hold on we could check that really quickly because if these are in fact similar and these two sides are congruent turned out this side happened to be congruent to those sides as well. And that means this side over here is going to be congruent to these two sides. This will be 10.5. So now we could really quickly add up. And I already see that I must have made a mistake here. That 185 must be wrong. Let's take a look at this. 7 plus 7 plus 10.5 plus 10.5 plus 10.5 gives us 45.5. So our perimeter is 45.5. I bet you I got that number wrong right there. What is 26 times 7? Should not have done that in my head. It's 182, not 185. And 182 divided by 4 gives us, in fact, 45.5. Okay. So you can see that if you have too many unknowns over here, you don't necessarily have to go finding every single side, multiplying by the scale factor and then adding them all up. If you know the perimeter of this, and you know the scale factor of the two, well, you can find the perimeter of that polygon as well. All right, let's try one more problem like that, just, just to wrap up this lesson. Um, here, these two polygons are similar. Could we find the perimeter of each polygon? It looks like we know the perimeter of this one straight away. If these sides are congruent, then those two sides are 16. This side must be 8 if these two sides are congruent. And we can add these up. 16 and 16 is 32. Plus another 16 gives me 48. Plus 12 gives me a perimeter of 60. Okay, rather than working out all the sides here and adding them up, I can see that the scale factor of this to this is k of um, this guy to this guy is going to be 8 to 6. Okay, but this is the smaller polygon, right? I can tell because that's the 8, that's the 6, this is the smaller polygon. So I'm going to take, and I'm going to say, my perimeter here, my perimeter of V, W, X, Y, Z is going to equal this perimeter times 6 over 8. I'm going to multiply it by that scale factor of 6 over 8 to get this perimeter. And 60 times 6 gives me 360 divided by 8. 
and when I divide 360 by 8, I get 45. So my perimeter here is 45. Now, if you want, you could go ahead and confirm that because we could figure out each of these sides. I could multiply this guy by 6 eighths, which, by the way, this is 4 thirds. So I could multiply this guy by 3 fourths to get this guy. 3 fourths of 12 is 9. And if these two are congruent, then this guy is 6. And I could take 3 fourths of 16, which would give me 12 and 12. And if we add these all up, 12 and 12 is 24, plus another 12 gives me 36, plus 9 gives me perimeter of 45. Okay, that's my lesson on similar polygons. I hope you guys found that helpful. Um, in uh, the next lesson, we're going to tackle applying these same concepts just to triangles. We're going to work just on triangles and then once we get into similar triangles, there's a whole lot of really interesting things we can learn that help us prove lots of other cool theorems in geometry. Thanks for watching, guys. Good luck on the homework.